Voyagers 1 and 2 are the only crafts that we have managed to send to interstellar space, and the probes continue to make shocking discoveries to this day. Being nearly 14 billion miles away from the planet makes these probes the farthest man-made objects in the cosmos. Let's take a closer look at the latest discovery made by the program. The Voyager program is an American scientific program developed by NASA that launched in 1977. The mission consists of two robotic space probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. The scope of the mission was to study the outer part of the solar system and gain knowledge about the outer planets and their moons. At first, the mission was quite simple. Voyager 1 had to study the planetary systems of Jupiter and Saturn, and Voyager 2 had to study Uranus and Neptune. Currently, the Voyager space probes are exploring the outer boundary of the heliosphere in interstellar space. As a result of their success, the mission has been extended three times as they continue to transmit useful scientific data. It was confirmed that on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 had become the first man-made object to exit the solar system and enter interstellar space. A few years later, it was also confirmed that Voyager 2 also indicated it would enter interstellar space in 2018. The Voyager space probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, a type of nuclear battery. This is a type of battery that is perfect for missions needing energy over a long time, which would be too long for fuel cells or batteries and that can't rely on solar energy. It allows us to organize very long missions to happen. As such, it's predicted that the batteries will no longer be functional from 2032 on, about 55 years after the launch of the space probes, which is quite remarkable. However, as time passed by, various functions and systems of the probes had to be switched off to keep the main system in working order. Consequently, they'll be able to keep their current set of scientific instruments on until 2025. The space probes were initially conceived as part of the Mariner program, whose purpose was to launch various robotic interplanetary probes from 1962 to 1973 to investigate Mars, Venus, and Mercury. But as their mission has been changed to go study Jupiter and Saturn, they were removed from the Mariner program. At first, they kept their original name and were called the Mariner Jupiter-Saturn Space Probes. However, due to their evolution from the Mariner Space Probes, their name was quickly changed to Voyager. This new program took over many elements of the Grand Tour program. As indicated by this name, the Grand Tour program, developed by NASA, aimed to send two groups of robotic probes to all the planets part of the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. Yet this program was deemed too expensive, around $1 billion. Consequently, it was canceled and replaced with the Voyager program. For this reason, the Grand Tour program had a major influence on the Voyager program as it fulfilled a lot of the planned objectives for the Grand Tour except for a visit to Pluto. The Voyager program used the favorable alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which occurs only once every 175 years and was set to happen in the late 1970s. The space probes used gravitational assists, namely the use of the relative movements and gravity of a planet or other astronomical object to alter the path and speed of a spacecraft and thus saving propellant and reducing expense. Through gravity assistance, it's possible to either accelerate the spacecraft, decrease its speed, or redirect its path. While Voyager 2 was launched first on August 20, 1977, Voyager 1 was launched on September 5, 1977 on a faster and shorter trajectory. Originally, the Voyager space probes were to conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn and their larger moons. As this mission was a real success, and as the probes were in good condition, scientists decided to go and explore Uranus and Neptune. The Voyager space probes made it possible to recover a lot of data and photographs of the most distant planets, thus allowing scientists to have precise details, which were, until then, still unknown, about the four giant planets and their moons. For instance, we were able to observe Jupiter's cloud forms and its wind and storm systems, as well as to discover the volcanic activity on its moon, Io. It was the first time that active volcanoes had been seen on another body in the solar system. 
It was also discovered that 7% of the upper atmosphere of Saturn is helium and the rest is hydrogen. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, was also studied in depth. Among the major discoveries was the discovery of a magnetic field around Uranus and 10 of its moons, but also the discovery of three rings and six unknown moons of Neptune. Furthermore, Voyagers 1 and 2 sent us a lot of close-up photos of the giant planets. Among them is the pale blue dot taken in 1990 by Voyager 1. This famous photograph pictures planet Earth from a distance of about 6 billion kilometers. Planet Earth appears as a very small blue dot lost in the vastness and greatness of space. As the main mission of the Voyager program was achieved in 1989, when Voyager 2 flew by Neptune, it was decided to extend their mission through the Voyager interstellar mission. The goal was to extend the exploration of the solar system beyond the outer planets, and if possible, beyond the limits of the solar system, beyond what we call the heliopause boundary. It can be defined as the limit where the solar wind from the sun is stopped by the interstellar medium. Reaching after the heliopause will allow the space probes to make measurements of the interstellar fields, particles, and waves that are unaffected by the solar wind, and thus providing scientists with invaluable data. As of today, the probes continue to send important data back to Earth. Currently, they mainly study ultraviolet sources among the stars, and they explore the boundary between the sun's influence and interstellar space. Four years ago, the Voyager 2 probe became just the second human-made object in history to exit the solar system and officially enter interstellar space. On November 5, 2018, the craft officially left the solar system as it crossed the heliopause, the boundary that marks the end of the heliosphere and the beginning of interstellar space. This area is the outermost region of the solar system, sometimes referred to as the bubble, and is located around 119 astronomical units from the sun. The spacecraft was able to analyze the makeup of solar winds, the composition and behavior of plasma particles, the interaction of cosmic rays, the structure and direction of magnetic fields, and other traits that define the edges of the solar system. This allowed the craft to make some shocking discoveries about the edge of our solar system. Voyager 2's exit from the interstellar bubble was not without surprises. According to the data, the bubble was found to be very leaky. This is because the material from the solar bubble was discovered in interstellar space. Voyager 1 had found signs of a leaky bubble as well. In that instance, however, interstellar material was found streaming into the bubble. This is the opposite of what Voyager 2 discovered. The new findings confirm that the leakiness of the heliopause, spotted in two very different parts of the heliosphere, is not a rare characteristic of the bubble, although there is still no real explanation for what's causing it. Before the Voyager missions, scientists predicted that the solar bubble just sort of dissolved into interstellar space as you ventured farther and farther from the sun. Data from Voyager 2 seems to confirm this fact. The craft's plasma wave instrument ended up measuring plasma densities that were very much on par with what Voyager 1 detected. Because solar plasma is so hot and interstellar plasma is incredibly cold, the density of plasma jumps up by a factor between 20 and 50 as you cross the border. Scientists note that this characteristic of fluids forms very sharp boundaries. They were especially surprised that both Voyagers crossed the heliopause at the same relative distances. Previous models heavily predicted that heightened solar activity during Voyager 1's crossing in 2012 should have pushed the bubble's boundary farther out. A period of low solar activity should have pulled the heliopause back a bit during Voyager 2's crossing, which came later. The fact that both spacecraft left the solar system at pretty much the same distance, at two very different locations, is a source of confusion at the moment. Voyager 2 also made some observations that don't square up with a sharp boundary, at least not what we'd expect. The biggest of these is the magnetic field measurements inside and outside the bubble. Astronomers expected the direction of the magnetic field would be very different between the two. Yet, when Voyager 2 crossed this thin surface, there was essentially no change in the direction of the field. This is something Voyager 1 observed as well. At the same time, the magnetic field observations on Voyager 2 suggest it found a thinner and simpler heliopause filled with less energetic particles than what Voyager 1 crossed. Again, all this data taken together raises more questions than it can answer. It is well known that the Sun consistently spews out shock waves of plasma called coronal mass ejections, which helps shape the rest of the solar system. 
Turns out the sun's impact goes beyond its own borders. The new Voyager 2 data, like the Voyager 1 data before it, shows how CMEs propagate past the heliopause and lower the number of cosmic rays beyond the bubble. This is somewhat similar to what you might find out in the galaxy. Supernovae send shockwaves out into the galaxy as well, stirring the interstellar medium, albeit at a much more intense scale than CMEs. Most astronomers believe that the formation of the solar system was triggered by an interstellar shockwave from a supernova. If we think about the potential for cosmic rays to promote biological mutations in life on Earth, these findings lend support to the idea that the Sun could also influence the evolution of living things on extraterrestrial worlds, in this planetary system and elsewhere. Both Voyagers have operated far longer than mission planners expected and are the only spacecraft to collect data in interstellar space. Each spacecraft produces about four fewer watts of electrical power a year, limiting the number of systems the craft can run. The mission engineering team has switched off various subsystems and heaters to reserve power for science instruments and critical systems. No science instruments have been turned off yet as a result of the diminishing power, and the Voyager team is working to keep the two spacecraft operating and returning unique science beyond 2025. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about NASA's detection of an advanced alien object entering the atmosphere. Do you think the Voyager mission will continue beyond 2025? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.